In this video you will learn what is in Jirix entity and how you can reduce the amount of boilerplate when you are using in Jirix. So this video is for you if you are already familiar with in Jirix, you know concepts like reducers, selectors, effects and now you are curious what is in Jirix entity and how you can use it to simplify your code. And as you can see here we have a library which is called Ngurix entity and this is an entity state adapter for managing record collections. And actually for me it doesn't bring a lot of clarity. But for you to understand it correctly this is not some new stuff inside Ngurix, this is just some helper methods that allow us to work with collections more efficiently. It won't change your pattern of actions, effects and reducers, it simplifies them a little bit. So our first step here is to install this package and this is ngrx entity latest. This is why here inside console I am installing npm install ngrx entity. And as you can see here I already prepared a project with ngrx. This is why here everything is already installed like effects, router store, store and store div tools. And this is how our project looks like. So here we have a list of posts and we are fetching this data from the API, but we can also add a new post, for example foo. I'm hitting here enter and we can see directly this post. I'm reloading the page and this post is still there. It happens because we stored this data on the backend and we are making an API call to fetch them from the API. And here inside Redux DevTools you can see all our actions like get posts, get post success or create post. Now let's look on the code just a little bit so you understand how it works. And here we are talking about our module posts and inside we have a store. And here are some actions, these are just plain NGRX actions like get post, get post success, failure, create post, create post success, create post failure. We also have effects for get posts and create post where we are calling our this post service accordingly. And here we have reducers which simply updates our state and our state is the list of posts is loading for spinner and error if we have an error from the API. And here we are storing our posts as an array and when we are creating the post we are pushing a new post inside our list of posts. And last but not least is our selectors, we have here is loading selector, post selector and error selector, which we are using inside our post component. So here we just get these three properties from our store and we are using them inside the template. This is just a plain ngrx without ngrx entity. And now when we installed ngrx entity we want to simplify our code. How we can do that? Our first step here would be to jump inside our types and here we have post state. This is just a slice of our state inside ngrx. The main point is that inside ngrx entity we have quite a special notation. Our state will look always like this. We have an object, inside we have IDs, for example 1, 2, 3, and we have here entities. And this entities is an object with ID and here is the whole value. For example we have here title, which is foo. This is the structure that we are getting from NGRX entity and we can extend it. This is exactly what we want to do here. We have our post state interface, but we want to extend it. This is why here I am writing extends and I am using here entity state. And as you can see it is coming from NGRX entity. And now here inside we want to write what entity we are talking about. And for this we are using post interface. This is exactly what we want to use. And now here we can completely remove this pose because this extend entity interface will add to our object IDs and entities. And these are two additional properties that we must manage ourselves. Just for you to know with NGRX entity we are not touching our actions and effects, they are staying completely the same. But we are jumping inside reducers and here we will make some changes. And first of all here we must create an adapter. And this is the most important part of NGRX entity. We are creating here our adapter and this is of type entity adapter. Where inside again we are saying that we have a post interface. And here it equals our create entity adapter. 
And here we want to specify the type, this is our post interface. So this adapter is exactly our object with lots of different methods that we can use. For example, we can write adapter dot, and as you can see, we have such things like add many, which means we want to push a lot of entities inside our adapter. Add one, we're creating one item, for example. We have also get selectors, get initial state, remove all, remove one, and so on. Which actually means this is just an object with helper functions. And the first helper function that we want to use is get initial state. Previously we simply created an object, but it doesn't work anymore because we are getting some properties from our adapter. This is why here I am writing adapter dot get initial state, and we are providing inside some properties. Essentially, we are providing the everything that adapter does not have, which means our additional fields like is loading and error. So this is how we are creating our initial state. Now the question is how we are changing our reducer. For example, here in get posts, we are not changing it at all and we are not using adapter. Why is that? Because here we are changing its loading property and it is not inside adapter at all. But here we have get post success and this part we can change. What we are writing inside is adapter dot add many. And this is exactly when we want to override the whole entity collection. And inside what we must provide is a list. In our case, this is action.post. This is what we got from the backend. And now here we are providing our state. So this line will update our state, will update correctly our entities and return our whole state. But it is not enough for us because here, as you can see, we also updated our is loading property. And what we can do in such case, we can provide here a new object where we are spreading our state with is loading property that we are setting to false. In this case here, we are kind of separating these things. First of all, we are updating our properties on our own, but after this, we are providing this newly updated state inside add many function, so adapter can do its work. And now we can remove the old approach that we won't use anymore. The same goes with get post failure. There is nothing here that adapter can do for us. Here we simply update is loading an error. But what about get post success? Here we need an adapter. And we can return here our adapter dot add one because we want to add new entity. And this entity we are getting inside action dot post and here is our state. But again here, as you can see, we are changing is loading. This is why we can make the same thing. We are updating here our old state with this loading false. And we can remove the old approach. So this is exactly how we are using adapter inside our reducer. We simply use functions inside like add, remove, update, and we are good to go. But it is not all, we also must update our selectors. Just to remind you, inside our selectors, we previously used post. We can't do that anymore because post does not exist. So now here, instead of selecting posts, we can use our adapter. And for this, I will import adapter and then use dot get selectors. And as you can see here, we have quite a lot of stuff. We have select all, select entities, IDs and total. Select all is exactly what we need. It converts our object with all our entities in the array, how we want to render it. Select entities means that we will get an object with all our entities inside. Select IDs is an array with just our IDs. And select total is the total amount of elements in the array. And here we want to write select all. And this line will convert correctly all our entities in the array. And inside our component, we don't need to do any changes. As you can see, everything is staying the same, but don't get any errors. And here is our this post that we are getting through our new post selector. Here, we don't have any errors inside the console. And as you can see in browser, it still works like previously. Here we can type, for example, bar. I'm hitting enter. And here is our create post and create post success. But the most interesting part is how our state looks like. Here we have our posts and inside we have a list of our IDs. Also we have our entities, which is an object. We have here key one, two, three, and as a value, we have the whole object. And additionally to that, we have is loading an error that we created previously. 
And actually, if you think that you miss some knowledge regarding NGRX and you want to understand how to convert plain Angular to NGRX project, make sure to check this video also.